The views and opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of Access for Wayne, the Allen County Public Library, or any other supporting groups. If you'd like to produce a show, call us at 260-421-1250. What is more important than our food? I don't care who you are, how rich you are, how poor you are, how young you are, how old you are. You're going to have to eat. And this, so this affects every single human being on the planet. I'd like to uh, take a moment to address the guests in our audience. First of all, thank you all for coming. We thank engaged citizens or welcome and valuable part of the political process. I only wish every hearing drew this much interest. Uh, the purpose of this hearing is to examine FDA's role in regulating genetically modified... To know that there was that many people for this was really cool, but to not be able to get into the rally because of paid line standers just there to stand in line. They didn't even know what they were standing in line for. They were just there paid. That was really a uh, dis disappointment. of the people who are here today to send out to my constituents so that the 90% of people in America who support GMO labeling can see that you are all here to speak for them. This nation is founded on the proposition that the individual is sovereign. The government is their servant. This, our, our Declaration of Independence tells us that governments are instituted among men and rights of the government. Who have a right know what's in your I know you're here because you know at this very moment there is a hearing going on, a misguided notion that we should take away not only our ability to legislate labeling in Washington, but to go to every state in the country and say to our state, we're going to tell you what to do. People have a right to choose truly organic food. Washington's business as usual, totally unacceptable. And yet we have this lovely little bill, which uh, introduced by Congressman Pompeo, and he deserves a lot of credit for it. H.R. 4432, the purpose of the bill is transparent. The purpose of the bill is to enable industry to deceive the American consumer. Regardless of what motivating you, you are saying, and so is the American public, we have a right to know whether someone tinkers with our food and alters it. If the government wants to get involved, it's a simple thing. Just tell us the truth. Let us debate whether or not GMOs are an issue. Let the American people decide. Let them have the freedom of choice. 
Our, our food choices are some of the most vital choices we can make. Our country, country is buckling under chronic disease, most of which is completely preventable, lifestyle related. unconstitutional and it, it should be noted and I don't even know why we should be debating whether or not the government can override the state in, in matters of letting the people decide. <coughs> Keep it at all. Who else? Anyone else? Okay, just a minute. I think one of the most important things to, to note in this debate, in this argument, is that we are currently winning, and that's why this act has popped up. That's why we saw the Monsanto Protection Act recently. Because people know that these thugs are dangerous, and they know that they are stripping our rights away steadily, so we need to just keep on fighting. Um, this act wouldn't in, be in current consideration if they knew that their products <laughs> couldn't stand side by side, clearly labeled. Um, they know that the bulk of the American people and throughout the world uh, I believe, if I'm correct on the numbers, that there are at least 31 other countries that have banned any genetic modified organisms or genetically engineered foods in their country, and many of them will not accept the food that's been grown here because of it. Um, and it's, it's a very, very simple win for us. We just keep on pushing for actual truth, and unfortunately they don't want the truth to be public because it's very, very obvious that when tampering with nature, we're going to take risks, and they have not been proven, have not been time-tested, and there is a bulk of data that is beginning to point more strongly uh, that some of these risks are more than just simple worries, and that they are very, very valid concerns. Um, so if we are able, as consumers, to make educated decisions at the grocery store, as markets, and in our own lives, um, that gives us the freedom to choose not to buy these products, which we have been strongly considering um, may, as many more people are coming on board with, with the education and the information that has been publicized. And they would like to stop that. they like this conversation just to go away so that they look like the good guys. And that's not going to happen. Um, if they would like to be the good guys, then they can move the way the consumers are demanding and not the way they'd like to move us. And uh, very, very simply, you know, we are winning. Uh, or they wouldn't be trying to bury this information so that they could compete against a product that is superior. That's all. Very well said. No, Anybody else? Um, I'm going to add one more thing in there, um, which is we also have to be very aware that Monsanto is in our government. The head of the FDA was a former attorney for Monsanto, so there is such a high conflict of interest going on in our government. There's many employees of Monsanto who are now employees of this government. So that's something to consider is that there is a high conflict of interest going on. Anyone else? Oh, yeah. <coughs> um, so when I first hopped on the bus, I was all about just the right to know. That's what was most important to me. Now that I've gotten back and I've done a lot of research, uh, 
the GMOs are really scary, and they've only been around for 20 years. So we don't really know what's going to happen long term. And the studies that I've seen with the rats and stuff are, are you can look them up online really easily, and it's really scary what's happening to them. So I, I just think that it's really important what we're fighting for, too. You know, the reason, I mean, yes, the, the right to know, but GMOs, I'm not saying that they're bad, because I'm just saying that I, I want to know. And we don't know yet. And I, and I want to know if it's in my food. So. Michelle, Michelle over here. So is that Lynn There you go. Sure. Right now, there are 64 other countries in the world that have either banned or have required labeling of GMOs. And Monsanto and all of these other groups that have con conflict of interest and have control of our food have done things in these other countries to be able to still market their food to these people. And I just don't understand why we can't do that here. Um, of course, what we're getting is we're getting the cheap food. We're getting the, the food that makes them the most money. We're not getting the healthy food. So it's just really important for us to understand these things. Um, also, the rat studies that, that Sarah was talking about, I've seen these as well. Um, most of the studies that have been done on GMOs have been done by Monsanto or by these chemical companies. And... Um, they usually only last about three months. Well, a rat's life cycle is two years, and if you only test it for three months, then you're not actually finding out what's happening to them long term. Um, there was a study done in France where they did the actual two-year study on these rats to find out what was happening, and they found that there was extensive liver, kidney, and breast cancer damage, and also pituitary gland damage done um, in very alarming rates in these rats. And the tumors that they showed on the, the breasts of these animals were huge. They were about a quarter of the size of the actual animal. They were humongous. Now, if you take that and you compare that to a human's life cycle, if we live on average 80 years, that means that that, and, and this, these things started happening at about year one on these rats. So that means that that corresponds to about 40 years. We've only had these GMOs in our food for 20 years. So what happens 20 years from now when we've had this in our food for 40 years, when we start seeing these same types of things happen to us that have been happening to these rats? So that's scary, very scary. I only have a few words. I went to the uh, march in Washington, D.C., enjoyed it. It's very educational. And I would like to say I want to exercise my right to know what's in my food. Thank you. Thank you. Hand it to the tree. Uh, I'll be right there. <laughs> <laughs> Who else would like to uh, ask some questions here? Do you have a question? Yeah, I'm going to show oh, uh, down somebody else. Go ahead. Yes. Hello. I um, think for me with GMOs, um, I grew up eating processed foods. And both my parents now are suffering from heart disease. Um, I strongly feel like there's a correlation. Um, there was a documentary that I've watched before, Vegucated, where this woman with heart disease completely stopped eating meat, um, stopped eating GMOs, went totally organic, non-GMO, and she basically reversed her heart disease um, and is having no problems, and she was a walking heart attack before. So with me, it's, it's the education. Um, we need to make sure that we're first educating ourselves and then pushing for um, our representatives to not support these bills. Um, we need to be calling them and telling them that we don't approve. Like, the, the representative for our district supports this bill, and that's huge. That's huge. That's not okay. Um, so we need to be speaking up about that and just educating ourselves so that we can educate other people. I think that's the big thing. We need to 
know what we're talking about so we're not just having a conversation with GMOs when you know someone doesn't know and we don't have enough information ourselves to give them. So I think that's really important. I've got a question for anyone here. With the organic vegetables and fruit that are in Kroger's and all the other places, I don't like them being more expensive. Remember in the old days before this GMO thing, they're more ex that, you know, they were just regular prices, but now they're huge mm -hmm. compared to the ones that have been doctored by chemicals or whatever. Um, what can anyone say about that? Just a minute. Okay. You first? Okay. Um, I know that organic foods right now are the only ones that do that we know for sure don't have GMOs in them. So at least that's what I read for my presentation that I just gave this week on FFW. So um, maybe there are other ones, you know, and it's voluntarily labeling. So they can be labeled. But to be sure, for me now, I'm scared <coughs> and I only want to buy organic. And I think if we have to label everything and you know, then maybe the price would go down, you know, for organic food. Just a little, maybe not a lot, but I think that it would be a big possibility, don't you? If everything was labeled. There's uh, yeah, one, one quick thing, that labeling is not always accurate either. Exactly. There's a lot of foods that are labeled organic, fresh, natural, that aren't necessarily. Right, I was going to hit on that point. Okay. And just because they're labeled organic does not mean they're not GMOs. Organic is a label about how they're grown. GMOs are what they're growing. So organic doesn't guarantee you that it's going to be non-GMO. Plus, they're very loose and free with terms like natural and organic. And, and these terms that they put on stuff, well, everything on Earth is natural. So they could sell you plastic to eat and put natural on it. And they're not lying, because there's no real definition or lines being drawn. And it actually is a selling point, because they're tricking you into thinking something's more nutritious, because they put a picture of, like, a farm on it, and the word natural on it, and you're thinking, well, that must be more nutritious and better for us, when actually that's all they've done to it. So um, don't be fooled that something labeled organic is also non-GMO. They're two different issues. And unfortunately, you know, um, they, have, they end up labeling organic when they should be labeling the things that they've done to it. Because to be organic and non-GMO, they have done nothing to it. But to make a GMO or to make something, you know, laced with chemicals, sprays, you know, from bug spray and stuff. They've done something to it, and that's where they should label it. They shouldn't make the assumption that it's, it's normal to have all these bad things done to it, and that's your normal food, and the organic food is the non-normal food. The normal food is the ones without, that are organic and non-GMO. That's the stuff that grew from the earth. The other stuff, someone did something to it. I have no one over here. I think when it comes to knowing if your food is really organic and non-GMO, there anymore is virtually no way unless you grow it yourself. Um, <coughs> large corporations are more than ever monopolizing and buying out organic um, corporations and businesses that make organic food. Um, and then if you, you know, if you don't know your farmer and you don't know that they've tested their soil and they're far enough away from a farm that has those GMOs or those herbicides and pesticides, if you, you know, you're not going to know. It's going to, it could possibly drain into the organic farm and then that soil's contaminated and those products are contaminated. So unless you're growing it yourself and you're getting to know your farmer, you're buying locally, there is no way to know. And it's unfortunate, but it's the truth. That's heavy. Over here, dear. Oh. 
<laughs> no, you first. Um, I, I just wanted to add a, a, a couple of real short things. Um, I mentioned before that we are winning, and that's one more sure sign, is when the market, or excuse me, when the businesses begin to move in the direction that the market is, that's a sure sign that the market is moving in an intelligent way. Um, if, if more of these companies are buying up uh, what would be termed organic producers or natural producers, then we know that the bulk of their customers are moving in that direction, or at least making themselves clear that that's what they wish to be able to purchase and uh, businesses go where the money is. That's, that's what they're here for. So if we keep on pushing, um, I heard ethical consumerism mentioned, I'm going to add a word in there. Um, if we continue to push educated, informed decision making and ethical consumerism, then we can have ethical businesses. Uh, they don't mind doing the right thing if it makes them money. But they have to make money or they're not going to be there. And so we just need to continue and encourage them that direction. Um, I think one of the most important uh, terms that we need to impress in this in this stage, and it relates to, I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Patty. Patty. Patty's question uh, was why are organic or natural uh, products more expensive when we go to buy them? And uh, typically at the farmer's market, that's not the case. Um, we have a, a burgeoning uh, market for the farmer's markets here in town and other places, and that's a great sign to show also that consumers are wary of what they're buying in the supermarkets and avoiding that by going directly to the producers. And uh, I think that the, the term that I was mentioning um, is the burden of proof. Um, that's the problem right now, is that the burden of proof lies on um, us. <laughs> that's not reasonable. Uh, the burden of proof should lie on the company that produced the product to prove that the product is indeed safe and viable for our consumption and that it won't kill us in the long run. Uh, that's not happening. Instead, what we're doing is we're pushing for ourselves to have to take 20 minutes in the grocery store to read every food label to determine what's in there. And if you haven't researched the ingredients to know the difference in the terminologies, then you don't know whether that's healthy or safe um, or if it's dangerous and is shown to be causing issues. Um, if, we are, or if we are forcing the healthiest, most provenly safe producers to bear that burden of proof, which in order to know that you're not currently not buying a genetically modified food organism, then one of the great ways to look for is that little label that says non-GMO project. Um, they have extremely rigorous certification that they have to go through uh, in order to get that label on there to let us know that, hey, it's, it's provenly safe, it's okay, it's been here for our whole lives, for our generations, and you know our forefathers before they were having the health issues that we're now having. And that's very, very expensive, and that's where we're seeing the cost differences. And uh, whereas um, the cheap crap that they're selling us instead uh, tends to be very, very easy to get by. There's very little standardization. Um, I mean, it is just standardization. It's, it's being factory produced and with a large number of chemicals that are very, very cost effective and um, produced in bulk. And many of those things happen to actually be waste byproducts of other industries. So um, that, that would, I think, address that. I have a good question for you, sir. Actually, if I may. Oh, okay, just a minute. Yeah. Not after you. I'm sorry. <clears throat> and I would also like to answer your question by pointing out that for a product to be labeled as organic, there is a huge amount of bureaucracy involved in obtaining that type of certification. The majority, if not over 90% of food subsidies and farm subsidies in this country go to mega corporate farms, which are growing GMO crops. They require absolutely no labeling, no testing, no certification, and the only thing we have to vote with is our dollar. As Ken was saying, if we don't know what's in our food, we cannot appropriately vote for those things that we agree with, whether that's organic or GMO. Um, but the burden of proof is on the small farmer defending itself against these mega corporations. Mm -hmm. And the cost lies in that cost of certification, the cost of reclaiming the soil, because in a lot of cases the soil has been very badly depleted by the chemicals that were previously utilized. And then you also have the farm subsidies that are going to fund these large corporate farms that are growing things that are not necessarily healthful or approved or tested. And the only way to reclaim those costs is through the grocery store checkout line, and that's where the cost is, is magnified for the consumer. Okay. 
With all the vegetables and fruit and that, does that include the animals being eating the chemicals as well? Who wants to answer that? Anyone? I'll make a statement on that. Okay, give it to Michelle. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> the animals, I, I, I'm, it's my understanding that 80% of the antibiotics in the United States are given to animals. And it's not all prophylactically. Uh, a three percent you will get a three percent weight gain in uh, poultry just by giving them antibiotics. So this is the tough, this type of stuff we're seeing. If, I don't know if ever, anybody's ever seen a, a corporate livestock production or any type of animal farm. If you, if you do, if you really want to walk through that, bring a bucket to puke in, oh. because that's I mean just look at look at the situation, our food situation. When I was a kid, I was around farms. Farming is totally different. There's chemicals on everything. Yes, the animal production. Look at your chicken. Go buy a chicken at the store. Hold it up. Look at the amount of fat on it. Look at your milk. Look at what's, look at the milk you're getting. And you ask about the animal production. I've been three corporate farms in Indiana. When I moved here, I moved up in their Amish country. They hide them way back in the woods, the, the livestock productions. They feed all these animals. They can't hardly move. Everything is mucked in or, or drained into a sludge pit, which is just plain rotten. It goes into the river. That's why the ecology things, that's why we see runoffs. We notice the, the antibiotics in our river. Where, where do you think they're coming from? The same thing that, that the food, the same food you're eating. So y'all yeah, answer that question. And I, I didn't get into the hearing, none of us did, but I did watch it. And I kept hearing the same thing over and over with the people. And the people at the hearing were saying, well, we want to do this and we need, we need to do this with our agriculture so we can produce more food per acreage so our poor people can eat. And you hear this and you listen to the hearing. I wonder how many of the same constituents that spoke there voted for the farm bill, which got food stamps. It's just, you've got to stop this, and that's why we're here. And that's why I'm, I'm here. And you ask why we do these things. Well, Frederick Douglass said, the power concedes nothing without demand. And Monsanto and Big Corp, big egg is big money and big demand. I want to be part of that demand. Thank you. Well, well done, Bill. Well done. Here's Michelle. Thank you. Um, with these big factory farms, there comes a lot of problems. Um, number one is how do you feed all of these animals that are locked up in these buildings? They have evolved to eat grass. So they take these, the cheap corn, because corn has subsidies, subsidies in the United States, so they take this cheap corn and they feed the corn to these animals. But these animals did not evolve to eat corn. So it's causing all kinds of problems, and that's why they have all of these antibiotics that they feed to the cows to keep them healthy, because they're not getting the diet that they're supposed to be getting. So it is really important also to look at the labels and make sure that you're eating grass-fed beef. Of course, now that means that we have to pay a lot more for our meat. So it's, it's all about choices and how much we can actually do. It's about how much money we are able to put toward our food. And a lot of times it's very difficult for us because the grocery prices keep going up and up and the amount of money that we have as the American people keeps going down and down. Mm -hmm. So it, it is a really huge problem. What do we do? I mean, I, my daughter, my 12-year-old daughter has seen, she loves cows, it's her favorite animal, and she's seen the videos where they have to put the holes in the side of the cow's abdomen and put their hands down into the abdomen and take out these byproducts of the, of the corn that these animals are eating that they can't digest, so they have to take it out. And these cows live with holes in their sides. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous, some of the things that you see. It's ridiculous. And we've also done um, some studies on organic milk. And organic milk is really expensive, but we've seen that organic milk has enzymes and it has proteins that the regular milk does not have. So we're actually losing nutrition because of the practices of these big farms. And in order for us to actually 
get the nutrition that we are meant to have in our food, we have to go back to these responsible farming practices. I'm um, just going to add a quick little thing about, you know, the good food is more expensive, but health care is very expensive. So you have to make choices. Do you want to eat good food and remain healthy, or do you want to have to pay a lot more for health care? These are really some hard choices that we have to make because a lot of people don't have a lot of money anymore because there, there's such a wage gap going on in the United States at this time. And this is just feeds into this whole thing, is that they're claiming this helps feed the poor. It doesn't help feed the poor. Most of the product grown in the United States is to be fed to livestock. On the topic of feeding the poor, um, I think it is also important to point out that people who are involved in a system where they are requiring um, assistance as far as food stamps, et cetera, in order to feed their families, the choices that they're forced to make in the grocery store often result in food that is not nutritionally dense or nutritionally viable. There are uncountable studies throughout this country that the especially in, in the southern states of America, you have a population that is morbidly obese and they are dying of malnutrition at the same time. So yes, the food is cheap and the food is plentiful and the food is available and the food is not feeding the body. Is there anyone else? <coughs> okay, over here. Hi. You're looking at me. Hold on. Well, one thing that comes to mind for me, just talking about food, is a matter that's really close to my heart. As a mother, as someone that chooses to feed my children as clean as I can, these chemicals, these chemicals that they're using that aren't being tested, as a nursing mother, I find it extremely disheartening to learn that Roundup is now being found in mother's milk. Mother's milk can process out so many things, so many of the medications, so many of everything else that can't cross that barrier, but Roundup is passing the barrier. We have no idea what we're doing to our children. I'm going to rather snarkily respond to Hope by saying we do know what we're doing yes. to our children because we have seen a 300% increase in autism, mm -hmm. ADD, mm -hmm. ADHD, mm -hmm. learning disabilities, birth defects, and inability to thrive. We know what's going on. Who wants to ask? Oh, okay. We're out with you. keep hearing chemicals and I, I think that GMOs are supposed to save us from chemicals because GMOs are like a spiritual crossway where we, can, where we become gods and cor can corrupt seeds so we can take rice and make it everybody's protein plentiful as a side of beef or the hope is that we can give some corn to a cow that won't make it sick. So. I have hope for GMOs because I'm a person who's spent 12 hours a day in the field pulling weeds so I don't have to have Roundup. And I'm telling you, it's hard on your body and uh, it's, a kind of, it's a great spiritual experience, but it's something that 90% of Americans have something better to do, you know? Uh, and we have the migrant farmers and uh, it's complicated and I do have hopes for GMOs, but I do think that Labeling is important, and we should know. And I, 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 as someone who grew up near corporate farms, those farmers, yeah, they would like to know this is what they did to this corn seed in order to cause this, because they aren't just running a corn and soybean farm. Their, their, uh, their son-in-law is like a block and a half down the road running a hog farm. So, you know, they, they care, and they're people too, and... Um, we got to work together, and there's, there's people who can benefit from GMOs, I hope. It's, 
There's a lot of us. <coughs> this is me. Yes, Hope? Well, kind of related to what I was saying before about the children and also what we heard over here about um, buying seats. These companies, they buy companies, they buy the rights, they buy everything. On the topic of children, because obviously that's something that's very near and dear to my heart, Monsanto bought our seats, our <laughs> They were our seats. We traveled from all over the country to have our seats in the political process to be seen. To look at my 12-year-old and tell her, no, we don't get to go in. It doesn't matter that this great organization put this trip together. It doesn't matter because do you see all these people in these suits lining these halls? They got here last night. They got here last night because they got a paycheck from a company to buy your seat in that congressional hearing. That's wrong. I hear you. I hear everybody. Uh, Michelle. I would like to uh, say that my personal beliefs about GMOs are that the science may or may not be great. It may or may not be good. Um, but what we're doing with the science is not the right thing. Mm -hmm. So um, there may be a, a wonderful thing that comes out of GMOs, of taking a gene from one plant into another to make a, a food that has more nutrition for us. And that would be wonderful. But what we see happening right now are these companies that started off as chemical companies who then became seed companies who then went and did made these new plants that are Roundup Ready, which is the pesticide that we put on our cornfields so that everything else in the cornfield dies except for that corn plant. So that makes it possible for them to sell more chemicals, which they are first and foremost a chemical company. So all of these chemicals that are now being freely put on all of these corn plants and every time it rains it goes into our rivers. So our fish have, have pesticides. Our drinking water has pesticides. And this is all because of the Roundup Ready corn. Um, they would have, or, I'm sorry, herbicides. Bees. Herbicides, yes. And, and there are also, um, yes, like like Patty says, there, there's also the, the pesticide corn that actually has the pesticide genes in it from the, the bacterium that are killing our butterflies and our bees. So the things that, are, that they're doing with the GMOs are not right. And it's not the farmer's fault. These farmers feel trapped and Monsanto has trapped them in buying their seed and the seed prices keep going up. And our food prices keep going up. And it's all because these companies have, have trapped us. We're trapped and we have to find a way out. And to me, the, what we need to do is we just need to come together as a community and grow food. Yes. Mm -hmm. We all need to grow food. We all need to keep our seeds. We need to use heirloom seeds, mm -hmm. seeds that don't have this um, terminator technology in it. So the terminator technology means that that seed can only be used for one year and then it's not viable the next year. So none of the farmers can now save their own seeds like we've done for centuries. We've saved our seeds at the end of the growing season and planted the next season. That, that doesn't happen anymore. All of our seeds come from Monsanto. Monsanto controls our seeds. Monsanto controls our food. Monsanto controls us. And that is our reality right now. I just wanted to add in that um, one of the businesses that Monsanto started out doing was creating Agent Orange. And some of the same chemicals they use for that are now in our food supply. Thank you. I'm going to show.
you know, and your, your point about growing up on a farm, I mean, just look at our population growth has resulted in farmland being torn out, uprooted to build shopping malls, housing additions, uh, animals are displaced. But if you've got less area to grow food and more people to feed, this is what we're getting. And this is why you guys are all heroes. You're Paul Revere. You went on that ride and you said, for God's sakes, the enemy is here. They aren't coming. They're here. This is about the best discussion I think I've ever heard. You all are fantastic. Uh, you want to say, go ahead, Sarah, say, uh, and then I'm going to show this clip. Yeah, you know, go ahead. I just wanted to... Uh, I just want to comment on the uh, logic that the not labeling. Can you hear me? No. Can you hear me? Dead. Can you hear me? How is a dead battery? Uh, basically, um, agribusiness is saying that, that they're not required to label because um, their product is not uh, different, you know, by any significant means. Um, to traditional and conventional uh, produce. However, in order to get a patent, they have to prove that it is indeed um, significantly different. And I just wanted to point that out. Thank you, sir. And we have one more question for now until this battery runs up. All right. Uh, go ahead. Uh, I actually wanted to comment on what Hope said um, because it was me and her that, that stayed whenever we, everybody went out to protest and and uh, and it was just like I just teared up because you know the police officer told us we said we want to know what's going on you know so we went up and we started asking people if they knew why they were there and they didn't know why they were there and, and it was so hard for me to believe because you guys have all been doing this for a long time and I knew I just you know I, I'm just learning about this stuff and you know I only know what I'm researching and what I read you know and to learn that that was true was just, it was so sad. And then later when I had talked to one of the speakers at the church, he said that he had asked and he found out that it was through a temp agency. I don't know how they can do, do that. Sorry, I get so upset when I'm talking about it. Um, but 40 bucks a piece is what they paid these kids. 40 bucks. So, you know, and none of us got to watch it. And it just makes me sad, you know. But I just wanted to bring up that point that we know for a fact, for a fact, that they were paid $40 from a temp agency to take our seats. And if there's, I mean, if it's such a good thing, what's the big deal in labeling it? You know, we just have the right to know, and that's what the bottom line is, I think. Okay, we'll see, uh, first of all, thank you all for coming. We think engaged citizens are a welcome and valuable part of the political process. I only wish every hearing drew this much interest. Uh, the purpose of this hearing is to examine FDA's role in regulating genetically modified food ingredients, and it is an opportunity for this committee to ask questions and have a thoughtful discussion on this issue. <clears throat> the number of people in this audience and in the hallway uh, this morning demonstrates the strong interest in this topic, and we welcome that interest and your attendance here today. I do want to remind our guest that the chair is obligated under the rules of the House and rules of the committee to maintain order, preserve decorum, decorum in the uh, <clears throat> committee room, and I know that we all may not agree on this topic, but I ask that we all abide by these rules and be respectful of our audience members, our viewers, and our witnesses and uh, the chair appreciates uh, the audience's cooperation in maintaining order as we have a full discussion on this important issue this morning. The chair will now recognize himself for an opening statement. The genetically modified organisms, or GMOs, is a term that refers to ingredients sourced from crops that have been genetically engineered to express certain traits or characteristics. A number of people have an instinctive distrust of food 
that has been genetically modified and are asking questions about its safety. Others see great promise for better nutrition and the alleviation of hunger around the world. There are real sensitivities around this issue and all issues regarding the food we eat and feed our children and our grandchildren. It is our job as policymakers, particularly as it relates to the public health, to establish a factually and scientifically sound foundation prior to taking any action that would impact consumers and our economy. And this hearing provides a great opportunity to put rhetoric aside and do just that. GMOs have been a part of the U.S. food supply since the mid-1990s. In fact, as much as 90% of our corn, sugar beet, and soybean crops are now genetically engineered, and about 70% of processed foods contain such ingredients. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration oversees the safety and labeling of all food products from plant sources, including those from genetically engineered crops. These products must meet the same safety requirements as foods from traditionally bred crops. The Food and Drug Administration currently has a consultation process in place in which developers of the underlying technologies address any outstanding safety or other regulatory issues with the agency prior to marketing their products. FDA has completed approximately 100 of such consult consultations. No products have gone to market until FDA's safety-related questions have been resolved. According to FDA Commissioner Margaret Hamburg, FDA has, quote, not seen evidence of safety risk associated with genetically modified foods, end quote. Further, FDA has no basis for concluding that bioengineered foods are different from other foods in any meaningful way, and the World Health Organization has stated that, quote, no effects on human health have been shown as a result of consumption of such foods, end quote. In fact, they can grow faster, resist diseases and drought, lower reliance on pesticides, cost less, and prove more nutritious. Even President Obama has stated that, quote, advances in the genetic engineering of plants have provided enormous benefits to American farmers, and that investment in enhanced biotechnology is an essential component of the solution to some of our planet's most pressing agricultural problems, end quote. Nonetheless, there have recently been a number of state initiatives calling for the mandatory labeling of food products that contain GMOs. And we will hear today from a number of witnesses who can speak to such actions and the impact they would have. Food labeling is a matter of interstate commerce and is therefore clearly a federal issue that right, rightfully resides with Congress and the FDA. I am concerned that a patchwork of 50 separate state labeling schemes would be impractical and unworkable. Such a system would create confusion among consumers and result in higher prices and fewer options. Finally, I want to commend Representative Mike Pompeo and Representative Butterfield for their leadership on these issues. I look forward to learning more about H.R. 4432, the Safe and Accurate Food Labeling Act of 2014, and I would seek unanimous consent of the committee that Mr. Pompeo, who's on the full committee but not on the Health Subcommittee, be able to sit with us today in this hearing. <laughs> Without objections ordered, I'd like to welcome him. Well, that gives you an idea what that hearing is about. I would like to point out a couple of uh, logical fallacies in the chairman's statement. <laughs> the first being that if GMOs and the use of GMOs prevent drought, uh, California, Arizona, New Mexico would not be in the state that they are in currently. 
in the uh, drought that they are experiencing. We also have to look at research that has been done that has proven that there are health impacts to genetically modified organisms. I think the loophole in that is there may not actually be a damage to the human body from the modified organism itself. Um, the loophole being that the damage to the body may be from the endocrine blockers that are present in the chemicals that are utilized in the production of the GMO foods because they do not grow naturally and on their own without assistance from chemicals. He also referenced a lower use of pesticides, and I'm going to extrapolate that also to um, herbicides and fungicides, which is a blatant falsehood, um, especially in the last three to five years when we have seen the introduction of super weeds that uh, Mother Nature and in her infinite wisdom has created in order to overcome the existence of pesticides, herbicides, and fungicides and are requiring additional pesticides, fungicides, and herbicides to be used in a heavier dose across the board for these plants. Um, from a personal standpoint, I would also like to share that in the past, I owned a three-acre farm in Columbia City. It was a farm that was carved out of a 100-acre holding. The other 97 acres were being commercially farmed for the duration of our time there. <coughs> Um, while we were living there, everyone in my family, and we had four children and two adults in the house, plus some dogs and cats and other critters, everybody and everything on the farm became sick over time. And we researched every possible thing. I mean, we'd had lead paint samples done. I mean, you name it. Finally, the Whitley County Board of Health tested our well water. And our well was condemned. We were not able to drink the water on our farm. We were not using it to water the livestock on our farm, and we were not able to use it to water the plants on our farm because our groundwater was so heavily saturated and polluted with chemicals that had leached through the ground soil from the 97 acres surrounding us that our water was toxic and it was making us sick. So for anyone to tell me that this process is safe and healthful and beneficial and progressive, <laughs> I have fundamental and personal issue with each of those statements. And that's not going to change because a distinguished gentleman reads a sound bite <laughs> off of a piece of paper that was provided to him by an organization that was able to contribute $300,000 to his campaign in the last two years. Yes. <laughs> Fabulous, thank you. I just want to uh, say one thing, and then I'd like to get one of the children that went to uh, comment. But uh, in a column I wrote, I, I wrote uh, that about, he mentioned Hamburg, the commissioner of the Federal Food and Drug Association. Uh, Mike Taylor, she welcomed Mike Taylor back to the Food and Drug Administration as deputy commissioner for food safety. <coughs> claiming that, this is a quote from her, his expertise and leadership on food safety issues will help the agency to develop and implement the prevention-based strategy we need to ensure the safety of the food we eat. Mike Taylor came to the FDA from Monsanto, where he served as a lobbyist, an attorney, and vice president for public safety. Monsanto, the world's leading supplier of the herbicide Roundup, as well as being the top producer of GMOs. Uh, and two decades worth of studies linked genetically modified orgasms and the pesticides and herbicides needed to grow them to cancer. Two decades of study. And she's saying there's no study that shows. There are thousands, probably hundreds of studies. This was stacked. I mean, just that opening comment shows you, to me, this was not a hearing, but uh, this is what we're going to do, and this is why we're going to vote to uh, not label this, this food. And, but Dr. Hamburg, 
says the FDA has not found evidence of safety risk associated with GMOs. My guess is she doesn't eat a bite of the food that Taylor recommends. <laughs> and this gets back to your point, Katrina. Uh, Aaron? I'm going to step out after this. Yeah, question. sure. Um, you know, I came here today. I, I don't know a whole lot about GMOs. Like, I mean, I, I definitely, you know, have a problem with pesticides and all that. I don't know a lot about GMOs, and, you know, I, I still don't know. I don't know the science on it, but um, I'm always a skeptic. I need some proof, you know, but, um, I mean, the fact that Monsanto bought, paid people to sit in the seats, you know, that, that's a direct corruption of our democracy, and that, that, if that doesn't make you angry, I don't know what would. I mean, that, that is... That is very, that's common. That that's what that's what's wrong with our country. That's what's wrong with our. You know, we well we don't have a democracy. You know, it's it's that just that just makes me angry. I, I do want to say that we did have we did have twenty youth with us on yeah. the bus, including an infant. The, yeah, one of them was an infant. Yes, so nineteen and an infant. But yes, out of the forty three of us, <laughs> twenty were under were eighteen or under. Wow. I also want to point out that. Um, on the ride back, I was like going, I said to someone, I can't believe how good that baby is. And right. someone said, we have a baby on the bus? <laughs> <laughs> That's how good that, that baby was. That's how good that baby was. Yeah. That's <laughs> okay. Uh, how, is, what's your name yeah. and your age? My name is Caveman Burkus Adams, and I am 15, just turned 15. And... I think the trip to Washington, D.C. was a very fun trip. There were some disappointments, like not being able to get into the actual meeting that, they, that we were there for. But other than that, the whole trip was really fun. Um, we went to the rallies, and um, we rallied for the... We rallied against the Dark Act, and... We went to many different monuments in um, Washington, D.C. after that. Like, um, we went to a museum and a couple of other monuments. So that was really cool. What did you get out of the rally? Um, out of the rally, um, I got quite a few things. It was a really inspirational and fun thing to go to. It really made me think a little bit about some things. You feel better about your country? Worse? What, what's your, uh, how, what impact did it have not getting into the hearing? Um, to know that there was that many people for this was really cool, but to not be able to get into the rally because of paid line standers just there to stand in line, they didn't even know what they were standing in line for. They were just there paid. That was really a dis disappointment. That's why I love that. that. That was rich irony of that hearing guy saying, oh, I'm so glad to see all these interested citizens here. I wish all of our hearings had this much interest. That was sadly comical. I wanted to point out Cayman was the keeper of our colors. He, he was our, our banner bearer for most of our stuff. And he kept a good eye on our banner which was uh, created by Kara Tobias, and we're going to thank her for that. Oh, yeah. She hand-painted our banner that we brought. And thank you, Cayman, because you were a great banner bearer. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, Cayman. Well, let's just see these pictures, and we'll be wrapping up. Can we go back in the spring? I think so. Go ahead. Go ahead. This is the picture I believe the uh, congresswoman took from me. <coughs> Where is she? 
See, you recognize that guy right in front of the camera? The guy in the hat in the back of it? I love this one. Anybody recognize her? No. 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 <laughs> I love that one. This was uh, people trying to get into the hearing that morning, December 10th, wondering what the age was going on, why we couldn't get in. Uh, I hope those are actual protesters, dissenters. Only the back. Only the back. Only the very back. Only the very back. The back. Uh, the protesters. See all that yeah. black? They're all wearing black. They were all wearing like, you know. And black. what this picture doesn't show is that there's another hallway going the other direction. What this picture doesn't show, I think this is the yeah. Is this on? No. I think it's on. Right. What this picture doesn't show is that there's another hallway that goes the other direction that um, all of the, the people who were there to oppose the dark act were standing in. So uh, we got there, and this was already like this. So we just got in line down the other hallway. And, and we got shoot out and by the police. we were asked to leave. <coughs> Democracy in action. All right, go ahead, Bob. Yay. Very nice. This is, uh, that's, the, that's the congresswoman from uh, Maine. Maine, yes. The one who took the picture. And, and everybody holding the banner behind it is from our bus. Uh, the, the man on the side behind the word stop is part of the Ohio crew. Now this speaks to one of his main points that Monsanto is going to save the world and feed everybody. Since the introduction of GMOs, food insecurity in the United States has increased. Food insecurity, meaning not enough to eat, by 57%. Last one. All right, turn the lights back on. Monsanto's advertising a lot on Nick, which is a kids' TV channel, and they're they're really kind of trying to show, oh, we're just a family wholesome this wonderful thing. It's not. No, you're kind of an evil corporation. Um, what what are what are the big things? Uh, I think last year we had the march against Monsanto in Fort right. Wayne, yeah. and when we came back, we went over to Jane and David's house, and David, being David, he started looking up who, you know, had uh, to invest stuff, who yeah. invested in in Monsanto, and he discovered something very important. I think that people should know is the biggest group of investors there are, are people, are just us. You know, collectively, through um, money markets, through, through retirement investments, people are investing in a company. Now, the, the whole purpose of a company is to, you know, um, bring profit to the stockholders. Well, most of the public is the stockholder, so you should start investing wisely, taking a look at what you're investing in, and invest in stuff that is morally correct and stop just go looking for profit. Because when you look for profit, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get this big corporation that's going to kill you for profit. Uh, and, you know, but if you invest wisely and morally and invest locally, then your investment is not only helping you grow, but it's going to help your community grow. When you buy food that comes from I don't know where and it's been frozen and brought out to you, it's not even seasoned, you know, it's not even in the right season for the food, you, you're asking for problems. But when you buy locally, when you buy grown locally and you buy see according to the season, like not, not demand foods that are out of season, you're, you're growing your own economy, you're, you're investing back into your community. 
And that's a very important point, is that your investments should be looked at, your retirements, your money markets, all your stock investments should be looked at very carefully and ask yourself, am I investing wisely? Am I investing in my community? Because um, that's the only way you're going to make this economy grow, <coughs> your community grow. You're putting people to work when you invest in your community, when you make sure that you, th an investment also includes your bank account. Because that's a very important investment where you bank. When you inbe invest in something like a savings and loan in a more local bank, your money is going locally. When you invest in a big name bank, your money is going all over the place. Thank you. So, as you said on the phone, you're, uh, when you invest in Monsanto and a lot of other things, Warner Industry Corporations, drug companies, you're it's investing critical. in the monster. You're contributing to your own demise right. in order to get that profit. And that's the problem. You know, America is such a money-driven country. And when people get that... Uh, their account back and it shows, oh, it went up, you know, I got 500 more dollars or whatever. A lot of people, a lot more than that. Right. That, that's all that matters to them. And this is, this is why we're in the mess we're in. Right. You, you need to invest back into us. You know, if you're going to invest, you got to invest into your community, locally. You have to invest morally. If you, even if you're not going to invest locally, invest morally. Take a look at what the corporations and the, and the things that you're investing in are and make sure that you're investing in something that is not only making you a profit, but making sure the profit is coming from moral practices and people aren't getting killed or destroyed, or land isn't getting destroyed, and poisoned, poisoned and, and sacred sites aren't being just decimated for profit. We have to stop being this big want monster of profit. We have to start being responsible. And the responsibility starts with us. What is Monsanto? We are Monsanto. And until we stop investing in Monsanto, buying their products, uh, investing in their corporations, going to these banks and putting our money in the wrong banks. We are Monsanto. We, the, the responsibility starts right here with us. You know, and that, well, that's a very important point, I think. Well said. It's hard to top that, but uh, why don't we just go around and make closing comments. And, uh, can, uh, can I add, Katrina was not was supposed to speak when they had speakers from each state. I don't know if you want to do the speech that you were going to make. Um, um, I can po possibly after. Okay. Because it's it's a, it's a little tangential, but yeah, I'll do that if that's if we have time. Sure. Um, in closing, I would like to say that there are people out there who are going to tell you that GMOs are safe. There are people out there that are going to tell you that Roundup is safe and that a plant that grows Roundup and that you then eat it is safe. And maybe that's true for right now. But I also want to go back in history just a little bit and point out some other things that used to be safe. Things like asbestos. Mm -hmm. Things like smoking. These things used to be completely normal and part of our daily lives. Lead-based paint, lead fuel in our cars. Mm -hmm. All of those things were tested and approved and endorsed by the federal government. They are now not acknowledging that they were wrong, that they cause cancer, they cause birth defects, COPD. they cause COPD. I mean, there's, there's a laundry list. I believe that given time and opportunity, GMOs and the chemicals that are necessary for their viability will prove to be at least as harmful, if not more harmful, than all of those other things that also used to be perfectly safe. That is it. Yeah. Great. Can I say something? Yes, wow. absolutely. Thank you very much for tuning in. Um, I was going to say, with all of the medicines that people are now suing the companies, uh, saying that it's done damage to the body or mind, the basic uh, medicines are now, the lawyers in Indiana are suing the companies that have caused all the vice. You know, the, you know, whatever happens to the body. Well, in some cases, they don't even allow you to file lawsuits. That's mm -hmm. how bad it is. 
that they can poison you and then you can't complain about it. You cannot uh, uh, sue them. That's like, um, along with the Dark Act, there's stuff going through, they're trying to sneak in laws like, uh, what is it called, the Trans-Pacific Partnership, which takes away a lot of <coughs> sovereignty from people. Yeah. And I think Monsanto has a hand in this one too, which means, you know, you can't go back and sue, you can't go through your company country, once some, your land is destroyed and your resources are just absolutely decimated, you can't go through your country and sue the company. You have to go through a TPP-sponsored jury or something, which is basically Monsanto policing Monsanto. Um, Please and investigate their... Uh, yeah, investigate yeah. themselves, and I'm sure, going. yeah, that, that really wow. goes well. Plus, you'd, if TPP goes through, you don't have a choice whether or not you can have, you know, some countries have a choice right now. We don't want GMOs made in our country because, you know, it infects <coughs> the other plants, it destroys the soil. But if TPP goes through, um, then you won't have that choice. You will lose yeah. the sovereignty of your nation to say, no, we refuse to have GMOs grown in our nation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is. Uh, what was it? Why don't you say it nice and loud? It's a corptocracy. Corptocracy. And, and money, money. there's money, but the the thing is, is it's all it's infected every aspect of our government at this point. There's a revolving door between Monsanto employees and government employees. Mm -hmm. You know, um, they, they spend a little time working for Monsanto, then they go and work in the government, and they go back and spend some time working in the Monsanto again. And they're passing laws and acts that benefit Monsanto. Our government is being bought by Monsanto. Our, our congressmen are being oh. heavily, you know, funded, campaign funded by these corporations. And you notice just recently, they increased the amount of money they can fund. So now the people have less of a say, and the personhood of a corporation is having more of a say. So actual real people have less say than fake people corporations. Very good. Anybody else, Bill? Well, you know, we hear about investment and things like that. Well, you know, bad investments had my 401k dumped. You know, I don't have any money to invest, but there's things that we can do locally. We can invest in our own people. Look what she's doing with food nylons, these people. If you go plant a seed, you weed a garden, then you're investing locally. And those are things you can do. You don't need any money. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, I'll just make a really short closing statement and you know, avoid this. Uh, in summary, this, this isn't about the, the safety of genetically modified foods. This isn't about the time when we've mentioned these, and I've mentioned some of them myself as far as our concerns. Um, these are our concerns why we want the right to know. Um, I don't know about you guys. Yeah, I do know about you guys because I know you all, but I don't know about anyone else that's going to be listening to this. Um, but I'm not going to assume to call you stupid. And that's what they're doing. They're calling us stupid. Uh, instead of ignorant, which we are, as a, as a populace, we are in the dark already because we don't have the information available to dark. us. It's, it's, it re, it's restrained, it's, it's buried, um, it's taken off of main channels. In fact, the, the main primary debate in our country uh, tends to be about other things that are far more easy to understand because that's what they like to do is pretend to encourage us to be stupid. <laughs> Um, if you watch that, that uh, the gentleman that opened up the hearing, his, his opening statement, and the gentleman from the FDA that responded to many of these statements, um, the primary thing that he came back with in retort to almost every representative's questions and concerns were, well, and then he would ultimately say, we don't feel that it's necessary for the American people to have this information because it's going to confuse them. That's us. Mm -hmm. It's not confusing at all. It, it, it requires some thought. It requires careful analysis. But if we're doing that, then we don't remain ignorant. And we're far from stupid. And, and once we have information at our hands and fingertips, then we can, we can behave appropriately, and that's to make educated decisions. I think that's the kind of country that we need to demand, as Bill said. We, we need to demand our right to access 
information so that we can make informed <coughs> decisions. And anything else is calling us stupid. Thank you. Anybody else want to say anything? Um, I feel like we're a big family now, <laughs> you know, that I think everybody has their own, their own uh, take on it and they're all awesome points and I just hope that we can keep the community, you know, get the community in on this with us and, and stay strong and, and just because the protest is over doesn't mean that we forget about it, you know, so let's just keep educating people and, and telling every single person that we can talk to about it. Um, if you notice, we're wearing our blindfolds. I was going to ask. About <laughs> They're symbolic of being kept in the dark. It's the sign of the dark act. Um, at, we as American people are being kept in the dark about what's in our food, what's going on in our government, what's going on. And this is the symbol of us being kept in the dark and not being given access to knowledge or access to information by draconian type laws. Well, our security was lax. We let people in without a blindfold. <laughs> <laughs> what was your blindfold? So, Terry, you should have checked me at the door from the blindfold. <laughs> <laughs> she's symbolically wear she's invisibly symbolically wearing we, her blindfold. We must get better security. <laughs> <laughs> I actually uh, symbolically am wearing mine around my neck because it's very easy to hang me with it. Oh, wow. <laughs> Well, thank I just, you. I, you're saying anything, Patty? I just want to say thank you. You guys, uh, I, I do feel like there's a family atmosphere here. You are so aware, so intelligent, so able to uh, verbalize these concerns in plain English that people watching can understand. And as I said at the opening, it just comes down to, do you want to be healthy? you want to take a chance? Uh, I don't believe anything the government says, because I think they're all bought by these corporations, and they're all driven by money. And uh, I can't even begin to add to what you've said. It's just so good today. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you very much.